Good morning, you handsome devil. We meet again, Kurt. How are you? Oh, I'm quite all charged up and ready to go. <clears throat> Very exciting week this week. Yeah? Very um, inspirational, I might say. The um, understanding is seeping into my head, however thick it may be. Well, you know, you've been saying that for a long time. So the question is, how much, under, how much understanding is there to have? See, question is, there, is it how much remains? I don't know. <laughs> it's like, let me plumb the depths of my ignorance. <laughs> it's big. It's a big ocean of, of understanding to acquire. And then turn it into a uh, decipherable speech. Articulate, yes. right? So I'm going to tell you what I figured out. This is really. Good. It's starting. Will it get me better, hotter, hotter dates or uh, better alcohol or some, more money? Probably. Well, okay. Well, that's good. There you go. Let me drink some coffee, though. Oh, you're drinking your coffee black? I'm at the brim. Yes. I just charged it up. Okay. Here's the chart. This is for the guys. Pay attention now. Okay. Yes. Yes. Pathos and logos at the base, which is roughly feminine, masculine, passion, discipline. Cooperation is in ethos at the top. Oh, I did not write it very brightly, but it's chaos at the bottom, yeah. which, which is the opposite of cooperation, which is war. So you, you, you sort of realize the ancients were a lot smarter than we think they were. I know, right? I know. Now I they just, got some I, things right. I know, and I'm, I'm doing my Hebrew work today. I'm working on that nonsense. And uh, it's um, making sense out of symbols and, and ancient words. And the, um, <clears throat> it goes to this symbol here, which is the Ankh. Okay. This is what it looks like to me. That's a the symbol for Venus. The symbol for Venus Tom, or Venus? V, Venus. Hello. So this is the onk. So passion over discipline. Yeah. The rod at the bottom is the discipline. This is the symbol for antimony, which was discovered about 1850, right before the uh, Roman church was reinstated independent of the Eastern Orthodox Church. And then the Western civilization was born of the- I'm trying Latin to figure out if you're going to go into astrology or numerology. I, yeah, I am, man. I'm like this. It goes to discipline over pathos or logos over pathos is what antimonies is, uh, how they symbolize it in the uh, alchemical world which is what Western civilization was about, which they, they subverted the passion of the church to the discipline of the uh, social order. That was the new ethos that was generated. So what's interesting is uh, among all these disciplines. Yes. Is the degree of anthropomorphism yes and whether that expresses as idealism uh excuse me as a form of naturalism idealism or supernaturalism okay i gotta write that down <clears throat> okay so we have to go through each of those terms because it's quite interesting idealism uh naturalism it breaks into naturalism idealism okay. and okay. supernaturalism okay now the go ahead trying to think we're I'm think, trying to think where magic goes in there supernaturalism well no, it's, it's techne versus spirit uh, magic that's what one of the major differences between the west and the east is they went with this emotional stuff because they stared at the stars all the time. And we went with the, with the 
pecne because we were metallurgists. And so there's no, there's a really obvious reason why they and their mythology is framed a certain way and why our mytholo ancient mythology a certain way. And it's because the, uh, <clears throat> the primary model that we used to, to, to uh, explain the universe was based of course on what was, you know, what was the best analogy for us. For our ancestors, the fact that you could make these metals was, was, was very hard to tell from magic. And so if you study the, the study of magic, it, it's, in other words, the, the study of how they practice magic, it's a lot closer to metallurgy than alchemy. to spiritualism. It's, like it's alchemy. alchemy, right? Oh, yeah. So th this is, this is um, uh, the magical route. And so the question is, it, it, it has to be, that it has to be uh, naturalism, uh, magic, magic uh, idealism, and then uh, spiritualism. As a series? As a series. It could be two vectors, but, or it could be, a, we could express it a number of ways, but. Um, but about, yes, yes, I, I like this. And it's the, the interesting function of it is this is, um, I'm studying this and it's like, so, The goddess Ishtar is related to another goddess Inanna from Babylonian times, okay? And they're related to the planet Venus, okay? And Inanna in Hebrew means in, please, not, means not out. Out is Tartarus, which is go to hell. You're going to die. If you're not part of the tribe, we're going to cast you out, which is um, excommunication. You're going to go outside and not be part of the tribe and protected by the tribe and die by yourself out in hell. Right. And it's like there's a place called Tartarus, which is north of the mountains in uh, the Caucasus, essentially, which is uh, the Great Steps. Right. That's where the yeah, that's the, where the uh, where the scary where the, fuckers live. That's where those bastards live. It's like they they call them Titans and stuff. It's like oh, those guys live there. They're bad. Well, they're the bad. history of the Middle East. Yeah. Is that is that the valley people yes. settle and the hill people who are rougher and tougher come and kick their ass and replace them. And then they get settled and the next wave of hill people comes in and kicks their ass and takes over. And then as soon as we get the horse, it right. turns out to be the step and the hill people. Right. So the issue is in, in the, 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 <clears throat> okay. So in, in Babylon, they're, they're looking at the stars, they're doing math, and they're, they're telling stories to the people to control their passions so they control the civilization. They tell whatever story it takes to make the people passionate enough to keep them in, in the social order intact with me at the top, right? All right. And they're trying to create a system of weights and measures, I'm trying to science this. Uh, they're trying to create a system of weights and measures that uh, that satisfy the needs for cooperation at scale that are beyond the knowledge, learning, and experience of the populations they're governing. In other words, yes. as as govern as you're able to form a government, which is basically you're taking over families, clans, and tribes, and you're trying to make them work together. Right, integrate. Um, Right. right. You're trying to create a standard of weight and measure. We call that morals, ethics, and manners and traditions. Ethos. Right. It's an ethos of the civilization. Right. right. And it's just so, so your ethos is just what are the rules of cooperation? So they're trying to give one that they can understand. Well, that what's the dumbest thing in the human being? Your feelings. It's the passion. So they, right. right. And what's the simplest, what's the most universal standard of weight and measure? The human body. So, right, the mind, emotions, and body. Right. So they use the dumbest possible method, which is storytelling, which is how mothers educate their children, right? You just tell stories. And uh, so they use the dumbest possible means to get across this thing. So what's beautiful of it, and I think this is what, um, uh, who wrote the Golden Bough, Frazier? Okay. Um, I don't know the and answer who wrote the, uh, the 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 monomyth uh, Campbell? Yeah. And uh, who was the opposite of Freud that um, Peterson's Jung. always talking about? Jung. Jung. Thank you. 
all, all these people. And then if you get to, by the time you get to Kurt Vonnegut, it's a science. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, people don't look at Vonnegut as the end point of that grammar, of the grammar of narrative. Okay. Which is, which is really disturbing because all narratives are, are descriptions of change in state. <laughs> Right. What's the, what's the difference in programming? You're just organizing changes in state, you know. And really, so you know, at a microscopic level, right? Right. So, uh, so storytelling is just a means of programming you to interpret information right. in order to anticipate and bring about changes in state. So, all stories are just up, down, up, down, up, down, uh, up, yeah, down, yeah. up, down. <laughs> <laughs> down up that's messed down, up, up, man. down up you just ruined you just ruined all of fiction for me man thank you buddy no no i i in my book i cover all this right and it it does it's i told people it wait, ruins wait. it the science wait, wait. of the narrative it's like you like i studied I movies right I, I studied movies quite a bit uh because i thought i'd make coca-cola commercials when yeah. i was in art school and uh i studied it and I'm like it took away everything <laughs> right i mean the more if you know about something like that that's meant to program you it takes away the joy of being programmed like i can't read a novel i don't want to well but yeah, I, I just it, said, I'm wanting to and can is two other things i mean it just can't, no. I, I i i don't know if i can <laughs> i just won't <laughs> <laughs> i won't try i'm just bad so, so there's a guy uh, i am i admire on uh, on YouTube, who who explains movies, mm. um, and uh, mm. they're usually well. We don't think of it this way, but science fiction and horror there there are modern myth fa fantasy. There are modern mythos, right? Uh, fantasy is a bit of a mythos, but it's a little too far. Out. It's almost childlike. Yes. Whereas science fiction and horror are our adult versions, right? And so some of these things are like. Okay, I don't, I'm not sure what the director was trying to do there, but what, what I try to do is um, uh, when I was when I'm working on it, I worry about certain things like, uh, did the actor pull that off? Oh, that was a really bad cut, but it lets me stay in the story. Right, right. Because if I start thinking about the shots, oh man, he should have done this, and it fucking ruins it. Because all of a sudden, I'm in the director's chair. And I've lost my ability to suspend disbelief. That's right. Participate in the movie. So I have to stop myself from, you know. And then there's things like the first time I saw this new Dune movie, it really annoyed the shit out of me. <laughs> um, uh, uh, and then I had the opposite reaction when I stepped into the director's chair. And I, and I could see the craft he was expressing. I saw his craftsmanship, which helped me overlook what he had done to the story so but anyway so um okay back so on anyway topic. back to the idea so of the down ethos, up down the ethos is the the ethos it defines the ethos of the population is the um, narrative that they accept accept the uh, cooperative agreement with each other they can see it working Okay, which brings me to my yes. next point, which is this is like, is the, um, I have to tell a story here. So there's, there's a story where Glenn Beck was interviewing a, a known socialist. Glenn Beck's talking to the socialist and he says this to the socialist. He says, he's gonna give him a hypothetical situation in which is a matter of fact, socialism can never work and I can prove it to you. And it's undisputable. It is the given for this question. What is your response? The socialist says, well, we have to try. <laughs> and it's, that's what we're living right now. Okay, I saw this movie. This was quite a little video that was produced about this project called Looking Glass using artificial intelligence to predict futures. And it's like science fiction sounding. It's like there was another similar project called Palantir. It's straight out of Middle Earth, right? And it's like, the, the, the thing that tells what's happening in the real world. And it's like, there, there's, 
in, in science fiction, you hear multiple timelines and it's related to string theory and extremely complex physics. And it's like this, the, the, the looking glass people in the know always found that no matter what happens after 2012, all the timelines coalesce into one. It doesn't matter what you do. You always end up at the same place. And it appears that we're there and they are trying to avoid it because it's inevitable that socialism must fail, but they have to keep on trying to tell lies, which is to say it's high noon at the crossroads and the demons have no place to hide, but tells lies right to your face in broad daylight. And it's astonishing to watch, which is explaining why the world keeps appearing to get weirder and weirder and weirder day after day. That didn't impress you in the least bit. Well, I'm like, okay, there's like a half a dozen things there that are this is one of those things where being profoundly stupid, uh, scientists being profoundly stupid, the public, the people who report on the public report to the public being stupider and the public being stupider still, still um, produ produ make, make a series of statements that sound scientific and it's crayon. Whereas, oh, yeah, it's certainly other, crayon. Hold, on, hold on, hold on, but it doesn't mean it's wrong. In other words, <laughs> it's certainly crayon. <laughs> like, <laughs> I can argue that point. <laughs> in other words, none of the reasons they gave are the reasons, the, 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 none of the reasons they gave, none of the, this quote artificial because yeah, yeah 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 right right we're lucky if we could predict what any of us is lucky if we could predict what we're going to have for lunch today so you know <laughs> i mean it just so uh and, and it seemed talib and i came to the same uh conclusion at the the same means is that the, the there's no closure I mean, remember, there's no closure to the system. There's no closure to mathematics. Correct. There's no closure to the universe. There's no end, system. end to evolution. There's no closure, right? So the problem is, is you can't write a program that does that. And therefore, all your programs will eventually reach closure. Okay. All right. So, uh, so Nassim Taleb did it by looking for outliers and in investments. Right. Right. I did it through trying to produce a, uh, AIs, tanks, basic IAS for tanks. Yep. Doesn't matter, military vehicles um, that weren't, weren't oh, so predictable, you could always defeat them. That's right. It's like when he's predictable, it's like, here he comes. Bing! The problem is, you can't, the, the problem, it's like when the problem with artificial intelligence, I, I actually loved that, what's her name? Uh, she didn't cover it well enough today or yesterday. She put a new video uh, on a subject and she just touched this. And, and I said, well, it's like, uh, well, it's the same issue. There's no closure, right? Uh, in anywhere. And so right. the problem with AI isn't, AI does, as we understand it, doesn't help anything. Doesn't tell us it doesn't anything. Do, it doesn't solve any major problem. The way we have AI today is it correctly categorizes objects according to how we train it. Right. But that's all. Right. So it can't invent a strategy and tactic right. from information it hasn't no. been trained on. In other right. words, so basically it, what they what it's doing is the equivalent of our visual recognition system, and that's all. Yes. So it's, it's the development pattern, it's of our pattern brain. recognition function. A, a, the AI, the AI is way back. It's still way back in here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's nowhere near up here because way out here, way ahead of all the apes and whatever, is man. And in yes. man, way out here ahead of the rest of men, is a small fraction of people that identify novelty that it, that uh, uh, develop enough mastery to identify a novelty. So what, what Taleb doesn't re, didn't realize, I don't think he did, um, and what I realized was that there's a metric to how far a leap we can make. Okay. A cognitive leap we can make. Right, like, like paradigm shift possible? Correct. There's okay. a metric to that. 
The problem is, until we have an AI that's capable of it, we won't be able to figure out the measurement for it. In other words, there's there's no way of measuring it in the human mind. No, that no, it's not possible because it's right. Like, so it's the only way to do it is right. It's like a this, phase. The AI will be the system of measurement that tells us that difference. That's right. Right. So, so any individual could do that leap, different different size jumps. It's actually the amount of information you need in order to make that jump. And, it, and what Talib was saying very rudimentarily with his fat tails is that right. the information you need to make a leap increases logarithmically. Yeah. This is why knowledge progresses, it tends to progress really slowly until it doesn't. <laughs> it's like right? going bankrupt. Right. Yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, it's like you have to accumulate so much trial and error to build up so much. Right, right. Right, right. So, so AIs don't solve, like I say to people, the reason you should be afraid of AIs is because people will make stupid ones, not because they'll make smart ones. And do bad things to other people. It's evil, Right, man. I mean. <laughs> that's where we are right now. Well, that's, that's where we're at. It, the problem is, so this is the same problem. This is deep what we're saying here, but the same problem Popper had with his, like technically I'm a critical rationalist, which means I'm a falsificationist. But Popper was wrong. He said, there's no way of critical preference. In other words, there's no way to choose where to experiment. This mm -hmm. is false. The, he never did any, he never did any empirical uh, research on it. But it turns out what humans do is we invest in whatever we can afford to. That's right. Right, we incrementally find things the same way water makes its way to the coast. We go by the least cost route to get there. All right, <clears throat> so. Okay. And so it's a navigation problem. So behavioral investment. So the, the problem, so the problem is AI, AI isn't going to be dangerous. It's people who are dangerous. Right? It's not, <laughs> wait, in other words, wait, wait, they, wait. They, you know what? the AI is too stupid it won't cause to be dangerous. We're, we're right? not in argument. It's, 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 it goes back to the, um, it's a middle ages fallacy that the thing can be evil. Right. right. The gun is to blame, which is the common liberal um, conception right. of that. Or, or that, you know, it, it takes actually a lot of brains to be evil. Right. <laughs> you, you, you have, right. I mean, it's, quite, it's I know. Not, that's why I think they're failing so badly right now. It's like they're not <laughs> smart enough to pull it up. Oh. So, okay, so, so, wait, so this is, so wait, we're, we're, you're, I want to get, you're really, you set off on this beautiful thing, but I don't want to lose making this point. <laughs> Right. Okay. Before okay. we go back to how right you are about the, trial. I know I'm right on the money, man. I'm, a, I'm, I'm, I'm Let over me the finish target. My no, wait, 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 wait. Okay, you got, I got that. Thank you, and that was my salute. <laughs> Thank you, sir. And oh, we're gonna Shut go up. back to. I'm Shut gonna, up. <laughs> like and subscribe too, and and make <laughs> comments below. That was my chance. Okay. So, so the point is, is that. Uh, again, uh, AI, the hard problem of AI is figuring out that jump. How do we do that? To do that, one of the things you see with what Musk is doing with his cars, right, is they're creating a world model, right? AI can do that. The problem is what do you do with the model? How do you break that up into what's valuable and not? How do you think of uh, episodes, right? I had an episode like this, or there were a million episodes like this, and in those episodes we do this or that. Just it we, down, right? Right. So an episode is like an index, yes. right, to a set of choices to a change the state. And so we can make use of we can basically do a big sum on episodes and find the common properties of an episode. Yeah, but. Right, and then the problem, now that's great because that lets you figure out how to work through the universe. The problem is you, it costs money, the, the problem, so the problem isn't this AI we have today. It's not the AI we can have tomorrow, which is the one that can actually make a world model, build episodes, not, not categories, but episodes, right? And from those episodes, uh, hypothesize alternatives and choose between them right right the the problem is that the amount of, no, of knowledge necessary 
to break the logarithmic barrier ah. to make an inference <laughs> that would produce a novelty is really, really high. And that's only within a given domain. Now, what if you say my, this set of patterns is like this set of patterns, except th that pattern is so abstract that it takes a human mind to identify it. Triangles, right? I mean, fuck, right? I mean, you're talking about a computer that's now, so if you could get a computer that's that smart, it's not a problem unless you make it a problem. Because computers need a means of decidability. You and I have one. It's called acquire. <laughs> That's right. It, it, it's let's, easy, let me let me restate that less generously. Acquire to the point we can get away with it. <laughs> oh my! <laughs> I like that. That was a good caveat to add. <laughs> That's our algorithm. Acquire wait, as wait, much wait. as we can so get away with without retaliation, right? That's our oh, algorithm. Oh, that's the problem. Is that, that we've come to the point where the uh, the powers that be have acquired too much and they <laughs> seek to maintain that which they have that pretty much becoming increasingly obvious that they do not deserve to maintain and the retaliation yeah. is and that the obvious. false promise of endless growth has come to an end. So next, the but problem is the, mach the machine gets to work and hypothesize yeah. like you and I can, right? It's gotten that far. So is the problem the hypothesis? Or is the problem the cost of producing the test to test the hypothesis, the hypotheses? So again, th this is the whole AI question. It, AIs don't make shit up out of thin air, like going to the Oracle of Delphi. They have to run tests like us. The only advantage of the AIs is they have better memories than we do, and they can process more complex information. Like we can give an AI, you know, 360 degrees vision. Right, right, right. And it doesn't, it doesn't hurt it. Doesn't right? freak it out. It doesn't freak it out. It can not model the world that way versus this way, right? So the problem with AI is, is that what we have got is object recognition. <laughs> and then we turn over object recognition to algorithms, programming. That's what we do today. Okay. That's really safe. Unless because it's not an AI, it's a robot, right? A robot follows directions, right? It doesn't, right? The minute you get to a, a, a general AI, which can understand the world and it can hypothesize, it still needs the ability to act. We're not bound in science right now by our inability to think. We're bound by the fact that the tests we need to produce are so expensive, we can't pay for them. And so numerous. We don't need to do it then. What? That means we don't need to do it. That's just nonsense talk. Because it's like it's like idealistic nonsense. It's like if we can't afford it, it means I can't invest in my behavior into it. It's not it's not worthy of consideration as an option. Well, that would be to say that we can't find we, we won't find a, a a battery with the energy density of gasoline, and that seems that's that's pro that. I don't see any evidence that that's true. We probably can produce a battery. Oh, well, they're they're looking, right? And they're investing. Um, they're they're investing in it. But it's like as a as, if right. So not that's what money, I mean when you say we don't need it. We do. I mean, because fundamentally, the the the, or, the organ the problem for an enemy evolutionary spirit, species is energy conversion per capita. Yes. Right. And so, what anything that evolve involves the greater production or capture and transformation of energy facilitates greater spread of evolutionary opportunity, right? Because that's really what pays for the cost. Yes. It's, really the cost. it's an incremental improvement until you get the leap. Is how right. it looks so, the, so the point here is, is to get back to your people here, is that <laughs> um, the kind of people who come up with AIs or doing this prediction or whatever, oh, it's yeah. stupid because the answer, whatever they wrote, produced a deterministic outcome and since most people have the same information they will produce models that produce deterministic outcomes so it's the you know it's the robot that's in the human that's producing the bot, the bot is the, the bot is telling you what the bot thinks and it's, is happen. so so we we can tell certain things by cycles right right because of learning is forgetting and because um uh, you know, economic cycles, learning cycles, whatever, demographic cycles. But these are nothing more, all the cycles are just matters of forgetting curves. In other words, 
That's all they are. That, right? was, rude. that was pretty rude right there. Isn't it like, horrible? Like it, people no. say, what? It, it goes like this. It goes to this aphorism, which is this. <laughs> Those who fail to learn history are doomed to repeat it. Those who learn history are doomed to watch the others repeat it. <laughs> and it's like this. So it's the acknowledged transmission error. Failure to transmit information between gener right. generational. So my generation reacts to my parents' generation. My kid's generation reacts to my generation. I mean, it just goes on like this, but it produces a cycle. That's right. right. That's right. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's like an engine, right? A learning engine. It's, it's so just cycling through like a, everything comes down to these very simple first right. principles. And the, you know, it, you say, well, Kurt, that doesn't help us. Change things. <laughs> it doesn't help. What's it mean? You know, Kurt? No, it does. It, explanation helps. But once yes. you know, it's a forgetting curve. Now, you know how important it is to maintain a rolling 200 or 300 years worth of history. That's right. But you have to but maintain working memory. This working memory. Exactly. So we have we have only so much lifetime experience. That's right. And we're reacting to the people, the generation or two before us. No, but without it, it seeing it at. in the context of the, the which you know, because again, these things work like there's about a three or four hundred year. Okay. Period. I have to tie this back a little bit. I understand you, and it's like so. So what? The moment we're living in right now is increasing um, compression or exhaustion of opportunities in which lies have been told to all the people and they behaved as if they were true their whole lifetime. So they've got deep behavioral investment and they, they believe they are owed something that they can never be paid. And therefore the passions are being aroused because they are going to lose something that they think they have. And it is of a grave loss that's coming. Yeah, well, so let's science that. Please. Um, <clears throat> two factors. Fear of lefting be left behind. Yes. Perception of, uh, of uh, disproportionality. Yes. Right? Um, and so uh, those Ir things. It's irreciprocity. Well, let's con confer. Ir uh, proportionality is the limit of reciprocity. In other words, I may offer you a reciprocal exchange, but that exchange is outside the, the incentives for me to continue to cooperate, right? My, my, does okay. that make sense? Okay. But uh, my, I'll try to my operationalize interest, that, make it, make it uh, understandable like a human operation. My, my interest in defecting from this group is higher than that which it adheres to this group, the reciprocity in this group. Hmm. Okay. No. Nope. So what's happening today is they are creating the left, right? Is creating and the left is creating, and they're, they're right and they're wrong, like usual. Um, the the myth that that we can that <clears throat> they are taking the truth that people are being left behind. They are taking the truth that, that while we are engaged in some reciprocity. The returns are outside the limits of proportionality. This is what the right and left share, right? They, they, that there may be a condition of reciprocity claimed, right? Or, or, or we may have rules set up for reciprocity, but the result is rent seeking instead, right? So it's outside proportionality. In other words, it's, it's providing incentive to defect. So people are all defective. It doesn't matter if they're left or right. Okay, so, okay, so people are defective. What does that look like in, in, in like in news terms? Like, what does that look like? Is that populism? Is that um, well, it's um, you know, it's yeah, all so, the yeah, all those who refuse to participate in the established norm normative order, or existing social order. The and they're right. is collapsing around their ears. And, and left and right are right. <laughs> You're right. I'm right. You know, know, the people who say this isn't working are right. There's only a sm small subset of people who are working. And it's most of those people in the cathedral who are in the talking classes who've managed to use credentialism and, and, and uh, financial and financing, state financing to create rent, to, man, uh, to create an industry of rent, rent seeking. In other words, 
our government has produced the same thing all governments in society and truly produce is that you have that's why you have to turn them over the difference is oh this, my the difference that is was rude we, that was rude no, you, you have to turn them over was a good turn of phrase, though. I like that a lot, but it was well, I mean, it's different for I got I think I got a lesson from this from a, a Russian American um, thinker the other day, a woman said, well, the problem is the rest of the world sees you guys had this revolution, and it went from good to better. Right. The problem is the rest of the world have has a revolution, and it goes from bad to worse. And so the problem is you keep promoting we keep we don't. My, my state reversal of her statement is we keep promoting democ re revolution and democracy instead of rule of law. You don't need a revolution. You just need to implement rule of law and give it time. Okay. That, that's it. This, this goes to the thing that got me in some minor amount of trouble this week. I was having a nice chat with a man who runs a lab. He runs a, a rock lab. He smashes up rocks and figures out what's inside them for the company. Right? And I was talking to him. We were having a nice conversation, Gino conversation. It came down to what was the mark of Cain, right? What was the mark of Cain? And it's not, not really specified in the stories, but I figured out what the mark of Cain was. So I'm going to show the mark of Cain as, as best I can recollect it. It looks like this. It's a crusader's cross. It looks like this St. George's cross, really. Okay. It's this crusader's cross. And it's like, that's what scares the Dickens out of the left because it's like, it's discipline over passion. Correct. Well, so I'm saying this to the fellow, and we had a nice little conversation. I said, because its order will be established because chaos is unacceptable. And well, so, what's order? Order means that you pay the cost of the crazy. security of the tribe. And oh. I was describing that to him and discussing it. And, and what happened was, Interestingly, I went to the next room. I was late and there was two men in there. And immediately upon seeing me, they jumped to their feet and I was getting the complaint because they were listening through the wall. <laughs> and they said, we heard you spouting your fundamentalist Christian contract. <laughs> and I'm like, I sat down at the desk and I said, can I help you, <laughs> right? They didn't leave. The, the partner of the man who was complaining said he's just tired i said it's okay it's whatever and i was able to help him but that was the end of that story but that the issue is this it's order is re restoring itself it will be restored because the chaos will be unacceptable that's all right so so um and it goes to law law or rule of law is to be reestablished in the West. That's the end of it, not rule of some fake religion generated by these crazies from the left, which is what they're attempting to do. That's all. Well, the problem of rule of law, hmm. it, rule of law produces markets which produce hierarchies. It so must. the problem is they want to be able to feel they... In other words, rather than producing mindfulness, which is what we're advocating, yeah. so that people can tolerate their place in this hierarchy. That's right. Um, and that once, because they tolerate their place in this hierarchy, redistribution to reward them for their tolerance is possible for everyone. In other words, in other words, where the preservation of proportionality is earned by the production of mindfulness that lets you tolerate your position in the hierarchy produced by the voluntary organization of cooperation. Now, if you think you're a special snowflake or sunflower or, whatever, or daisy, right? And your mommy told you you were special and you felt like you were oppressed and left behind. You've been programmed to fail. You weren't programmed with mindfulness. You're programmed with envy, and you're programmed to fail, and you're programmed to be a weapon against your civilization. Right. So the, the the issue here, so the issue here is that is that yes, we can have low power distance, relatively equal. You know, though it's equalitarian, relatively equal hierarchy of people who are rewarded proportionally 
if they learn the mindfulness to tolerate their position. But if they don't want to tolerate their position, what they're saying is lie and pay me for it. Or organize a lie and I'll make sure you get paid for lying. It's right. Leninism right there, buddy. Exactly. Babylonian control. So, so uh, you can't, and, and what happens, of course, is those places always get poor. So in the end, in the end, uh, what, what's the matter? What, what did you're I do? Good. I'm just, I'm not acknowledging what you're saying. In the end. In the end, uh, real, uh, Christianity produced mindfulness. That's right. It produced virtue within my domain of control. And it produced irresponsibility for those things outside my control. This is a good kind of mindfulness. The only criticism I have of Christianity is it's argued with the Abrahamic method. And the fundamentalists try to take it from a wisdom literature of producing mindfulness to a political movement like Judaism and Islam. They try to make political Christianity. I which understand. is to mean it's I understand. true. It's a, it's a um, monopolism. Right. And so, uh, whereas if you say, well, it, you know, if I science Christianity, which I've done, it's really simple. The problem is they don't want it scienced, right? Well, that, I don't think that's a problem. It's, it's, and they get so mad when I say that's it, because what they're saying is you don't believe what I believe, and I'm going to rebel against you unless you believe the way I believe. No, that's interesting, because I had a chat with a fellow. He's a, he's a very interesting elderly man, and he's like, has a problem, can't. He, he used to be quite agile with understanding where things are found in the Bible as a proof to, to because he doesn't like when Christians get it wrong and he wants to prove them wrong by showing them in the Bible where they're wrong. And I'm like this, I'm like, okay, as a, as a faithful man myself, I don't care what you prove by pointing at the book. Okay. That's not interesting to me. As long as you're right, I'm happy. And it's like, so, but he, he, he wants to prove it. And I'm like, I don't need proofs. I, that doesn't impress me. Those kind of proofs don't impress me. And, and I, I'm of your opinion, and I agree with this, which is that the uh, he, he related a story of a pastor who is attention seeking and, and using that, the, that methodology. And I'm like, yeah, he's a problem. And so he's a, he won't follow that guy because it's like that guy's a problem. And that's okay. It's okay. So what does that mean? They are to be marginalized and let them do their thing on the side. And if they want to do that, that's fine. It's only fine. <clears throat> we say that's fine because we have the perception of being strong, but if we're weak, it's not fine. Um, uh, uh, so many ways to go here. I don't know where to, I don't know which avenue. I'm gonna, to I know what to do. I have to ask you this question because I wanted to go talk about the citability because it will help me in my, my efforts to um, make the my uh, uh Christian theology, at least. Okay. It doesn't need to be related to that, but in decidability, oh, it's, just, it's, more general it's a grammar. Yes. Right. It's a grammar of children's stories. It works. Philosophy is a grammar of of adult stories okay and science is a grammar of of elite technicians stories. yes yes right and so this is just a graceful increase in precision and a graceful decrease in precision yes, now the yes. increase and de de decrease in precision can be handled by two methods one is i either have the information to work at the scientific or the rational or the or the theological or not right it, when all else fails, you go to the theological. If you have enough information to make it rational, you make it rational. If you right. have enough information to make it scientific, you make it scientific. But it, the, the argument I always use is no general gets shot for falling back on biblical morality if he has to make a hard choice in the absence of knowledge. In other words, in the absence of all, <coughs> if under pressure, the absence of knowledge, do the right thing. This is the why the trolley test doesn't matter. So, <coughs> so the second direction uh, is that is that your age. It's just the same argument, right? 
if you're young and not educated, the Imprecise. empathic, yep. It, yep. it's yep. enough because your sphere of influence is only the people you interact with. Be good. Now I'm working in the phys now I'm working in the in the greater social world or the economic world. And now I have to obey moral and ethical norms and rules and traditions, which I have to explicitly understand. Right. And so I have to reason through because now it's not what do we share, it's what do we have that's different. In other words, the difference between that's uh, right. now we're in a marketplace. It, now we're in a marketplace, and now we got to not deal with what we share. Marketplace what, ethics. ethics. Marketplace ethics. And that's rational, right? Not that, and so you have to you go from the 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 youth child uh, to the young adults or the or, or the, the youth so, adult. So it's it's social influence increasing requires increased precision of language and because sure, we differ. And why do we have political systems? Because we can't organize by market needs. <laughs> so. There, you have science, and law is essentially science. You have law, uh, science, science of decidability, reciprocity, et cetera. That's for political scale. And so you, these are just- so, so, so it's, okay, let's just, uh, I wanna tie this. That was a very excellent, and I wanna thank you. So it comes to decidability as to how do I decide what to do? Is that what that means to you? Okay. There seems to be a confluence here. Between. Christian among your peers, um, uh, 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 Kantian in your commerce, and um, er, and um, uh, what's his name? Smithian in your politics, right? I mean, it, it just, just because it, it, the reason is you can't know anymore. It's like, the, in other words, you can't know what other people want at the political level. <laughs> comrade it doesn't matter <laughs> no, right? it's right. It's right. okay there was a great another glenn beck story glenn beck was glenn beck was interviewing i'm a getting Russian. glenn beck no, no, fundamentalist christianity no 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 no, 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 no 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 hang with me now hang with me don't get don't go off in la la land kurt hang with the story so glenn beck was interviewing a russian economist from soviet days and so he, Soviet economist gets to a high level enough that he gets the key to the bishop's library, which is the locked library that has the forbidden books that no one's allowed to read without permission from the higher up comrades. And because he's trying to solve this problem, like, how the hell come that we can't make this bullshit work? Right. And it's like, so he's looking in there and he finds Hayek's book, Road to Serfdom. And he's like, the answer's right here. It's right here. <laughs> what the hell? How come it's locked up? It's the wrong answer, kids. Well, you know, if, if, if this is uh, well known in the um, in the uh, discipline, but a lot of Russian economists went through that cycle, and it's sort of like when we talk about people need to crash. Oh yes. Right, and so you get people like Kondratiev and. Um, yes. And this guy, and, and and what happens is, of course, the Russian government. They have to get you. The, or, you're not coming up with the right answer, bro. No, like, oh, no. Whoa, 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 you're off the tracks. You're out, you're in hell. So, harder is for you. Well, brother. the argument is always: it, it is anybody in the Russian government ever really trying to work for the common good, ah. or are they trying to work it's, for their own good? Survival. And the answer is their own. I mean, and you have to understand. You have to be Russian to get this, but their sense of the common good. It, it's good for me. Well, <laughs> it's even like their idea of freedom. Yeah, Our idea of freedom is reciprocity and sovereignty. Theirs isn't. It's authority. There are, the, the Russian concept oh, of freedom okay. means on, that regardless of... Right. That's what freedom means. It doesn't mean reciprocity. For us, freedom means the ability to engage in the market, which is free, the freeman, right? The ability to engage in the uh, polity, the citizen, and the ability to govern, which is the sovereign, right? right? So you have a choice. But in these cases, we're all limited. But their, joy, their, choice, their cognition of freedom is that you are not inhibited in any way. You can do whatever you want. So it's more like being a wild man, right? Yes. A wild person like the animals and the beasts, they're truly free. 
they don't think of it this that's way. Tar, that's that's um. Then your passions can run wild. Right. I mean, and, and, and you know, I love. It's kind of funny because you have Germans, and I always think of them as having no humor, but being very pious. They're like secularly pious, and and it's wonderful, right? I'm never gonna pick on German culture really, right? Except for their lack of sense, their sense of humor. Um, and <laughs> then um, uh, you go out to the Russians, and uh, what was what were we just talking about there? piety order I is their passion uh, their passion it's a very passion like the way they see the world is closer to the italians right it's just quiet right where where italians are uh extroverting they're they're introverting but it's the same thing that's driving that behavior that's one of the reasons i love another other reason i love them right that passion matters because so they don't try to constrain it. I think that's one of the reasons they're not so crazy as Westerners is they don't feel bad about having passions. It's yeah. healthy. That's right. It's healthy to exercise them. You just don't want to cause harm, right? So it's like so funny here. You see people have fight, especially blacks in America have fights and it's like they want to kill each other. You have Russians get in a fight and the minute somebody goes down, it's over. It's a duel. It's not. Oh, a I, see. I see. The guy goes oh, sorry, down. Sorry, they roll him over on the side so he doesn't choke. No, we they pull him out of the road. The satisfaction <laughs> of the passion, which is is the decidability is done. It's decided. They just view it as healthy. It's just healthy, but it's, we've it's decided needed. the decision it, it, was made. There's a passionate. Yes. Yeah. Passionate dispute. Yeah, but they don't become wrapped resolved. up in it. What? It's like it's they don't come wrapped up in it. It's like uh, like it's. I love Italy, but I mean, you get in these Italian. I mean, I live. I grew up around here, right? Oh, yeah. There's a lot of Italians, especially Sicilians, and, and it's North, Southern New England has a lot of Italians, on it. and so uh, they, they get wrapped up in the joy of the experience of ex emoting. Right. It's like being it's like doing drugs, being unbound. Right. right? Just let right. it run. They, they don't do that. That's why I love them. Right. I love them. It's like this beautiful self-regulated honesty, but they don't revel in it because that would oh, be they don't they don't um, indulge it. Right. Indulge it. Right. And so and so it's that because that would be a violation of order. And they put right, order. It's a high. little bit disorderly. It's like oh, right? that, that's now. not order. That's wrong. Order people who don't aren't orderly or are untrustworthy. And you don't want or even them. less trustworthy. They don't view themselves as. No, they just it's how they, they do don't view others. it as untrust. Like this is one of those things. I it's my favorite subject when talk, <laughs> talking about the, the Russians because I love I love them right. But like my view of Russians is that they're really trustworthy. But you don't okay. produce the incentives where, it, where it's ra rational to engage in corruption, right? Or right. Now I have to go back. Now I have to go back to this. It seems like there's a there's a um, a scales of decidability, right? Yes. Which is at low scales of decidability, which is low influence low information requirement, low grammatical precision. And as we increase the scale of decidability, we have to increase the precision of the language, the amount of information per, of present, and the amount of influence is also expanded to that degree. And, and it's like, so they're, they're, they're intimately tied together in a, um, Direct proportionality. Uh, yeah, you always, in your effort to simplify, I have to science, but yes, they're just a scope, a, a proportion, proport, I mean, proportionally, yeah, they're just a scale from one to the other based on the population size that you're talking about, right? The population size you're responsible for interacting with. Right, the variation of that population size. If I go to a given church, right, the manners in that church are going to be very similar. Very narrow. But if I go to like an Italian Catholic 
a, a Polish Catholic, um, a German Catholic, and uh, well, Church of England, right? It was a great example, or a Baptist church. What's going to be that's it gets. I mean, realistically, this is true. The the uh, Christian church spectrum is divided by around seven points of IQ for each faction, and we actually sort into them. I won't tell you the dumb ones. That will about. be yeah. That's restricted in the locked cabinet. I, I get I get to be comfortable that that among the <laughs> the Tories in the Church of England, I'm at the top, and I'll just be happy to stay there. It's the bishop's locked cabinet, that information, I'm sorry to say. Well, you know, again, you go into it is what does the Russian want? I mean, <clears throat> we keep talking about this, but there's freedom versus order. Oh, but how I do want you to produce that, that order? You, you know, they there's, uh, you, how do you produce order. the order? We produce it via negativa by rule of law. That's right. right. They produce it the by norm, tradition, and value. That's it, right? So it's That's like a it, positive. positive. Uh, okay. And right. so uh, uh, the, there, there's a narrower window, and like you can look at both. And this is why I was saying: is you need Russian ethics written into Anglo law. <laughs> okay. Gonna, but if you had that, we would have no woke. And the Russians would have rule of law. <laughs> that would be a perfect confluence. So, but I, I will go further. It's like this: the, the the rule of law that you are proposing, which is a federation of sovereign individuals, based on the rule of law, via negativa, right? Yeah. Although, although like, I mean, I, 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 there, there's no reason. That, I mean, as rule of law is negativa, but you can create policy under rule of law. That's via positiva. That's right. That's right. right. And so you have to have a means of get, making people sufficiently viable that they can have rule of law. Because under rule of law, you have to do a duty, right? You have to do truth before face, uh, duty before self, uh, commons before uh, self, right? right? Right. This is the same argument, right? You have to do that. And so how do you get people there? How do you produce the mindfulness that gets them there? Turns out Christianity is the best way to get, we got so far, of getting them there. If they'd have finished the goddamn Christian project, which you and I bitch about all the time, oh then, then we, would have had, we would be there already. But they failed the goddamn Christian project. Maybe you and I will live oh longer. My. Oh my, 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 my. It's open ended. It's not a closed ended function. Well, as I say, maybe we're long enough to no, fix it. Like this. I point back to here. Yeah. Okay. Well, you keep going. You have to do it, man. Because it's like so, this. The, the people who are the individuals who, by force of arms, enforce the via negativa rule of law must be organized together That's right so all. let's take let's use with the current example okay current example right? the current example is uh american and england we have rule of law we actually have rule of law so how do we treat the loyalty problem loyalty problem what's the loyalty words, problem when we're going up against a threat we're loyal. That's Period. right. Period. Yeah. The Federation stands. Right. Does so no Germany, defection. Is Germany following that? Yeah. You're hurting me, man, because it's like right now. Is I France really, following I, that? Wait, I want you to know something, sir. I regard the entire Western civilization as collapsed under the weight of the, of the enemy team. The pathological team, the passionate team is in charge everywhere in Western civilization yeah, momentarily. That, that there is no rule of law. There is no rule of law. It only was rule of law and has a memory of rule of law that has not been enforced. Correct. Which is a so, sad so, day. So let's let's just get to the point though. What are the German what principle of natural law are the Germans violating? If we I, start out with reciprocal insurance by force of arms regardless of cost reciprocal insurance regardless of cost by force of arms of the of the um, self-determination by self-determined means by tests of so sovereignty and demonstrated interest and reciprocity and display word and deed. okay what are they doing they're not holding up reciprocal insurance regardless how, how are they failing i don't understand what example it is that you're pointing out? They're they're not paying the high cost oh, of 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 
maintaining a military. Of maintaining the alliance. Right? They're not demonstrating, they're not fulfilling their obligation. So that's what loyalty means. Loyalty doesn't mean I feel they are failing in in um, in, uh, in alienation. Right. They've and alienated so, their obligation. Right. They're, and it, it doesn't appear that it's the people either. It's just the government. Well, I know the people are being subjugated by a, a occupying force. Right. And so does this. I, I have a thing against female prime ministers and presidents, obviously, for 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 very good re, uh, empirical reasons. So uh, that now, how does Mark Merkel look right now? She looks like a fucking idiot because she was. She's merely exposed for what what is well, behind she, the mask. She was an Eastern European, uh, Soviet, educated. Um, ally of Russia before the ally of the West. And she simply sought pragmatic policy to hold on to their privilege of being protected by the United States. In other words, subsidized. It's by under the, the empire of the English empire. And now she, they don't want to pay the price. Of course not. Now, what about France? France has said for a long time they want to get out of NATO. They got out. What? I thought they were out. I don't think they're out. If they're out, I don't. I, now I, I have to check. I could be having a brain. I think they got my, out of NATO. My fuzzy nose and my fuzzy brain could be saying they're out. I don't think so. I'm, I'm looking it up. It says it's in NATO. Yeah. So I they jumped out. But I want to make a point though: is oh. what are France's interests? France is just Russia by other means. <laughs> they have an affinity to one another, don't they? They want to. Uh, they want authority, right? Right. The, the, both of them want it for the same reason. They want authority because they believe they have a manifest destiny to make to create a monopoly. Ah. And so both are the same. So if you look at the loyalty structure right now, it's it's Europe exclusive of Germany and France. I'm always pissing on France for good reason. They're the enemy <laughs> of Europe. France is a North African or South Mediterranean country. It is not a Germanic country. Now, I may, it may be restated as it's Paris that's Ile de France that's a uh, Mediterranean or North African country. But it certainly isn't the countryside. The country, well, I, I don't know anymore. Like, I haven't spent, I spent right. a lot of time in France up until the mid 2000s. Well, no, they have their populists as well. Yeah, but their populists are populists. It's like this common problem. Russia is against the West because of a putting, not, not because of rule of law, but because of democracy enabling woke, right? Uh, the, the West has a problem with uh, Russia because it's absence of rule of law, right? The problem is both of these questions are solvable by rule of law. <laughs> right. We, in other words, rule of law can fix the Russian problem by creating a via positiva demand for Russian ethics, which conservatives in the West would agree with, because they're the best ethics. That was a highlight. That was a highlight. <laughs> that was pointed out to you, Western ethicists. What, what, what's the West? Need? Well, the West is trying to defeat, trying to argue with woke right now. Who's going to win? You guys seem to be thinking the woke is not going to win, and I don't know. I and guarantee so, you that woke is not going to win. Okay, so all we need is the via positiva uh, command for, uh, the, excuse me, the via negativa that prohibits the woke behavior, right? Antisocial, female, antisocial, antipolitical, anti uh, strategic behavior. So all we need is to produce that. So the problem for both the, the West and Russia is the absence of sufficient rule of law to protect. The, the Russians who still have the proper traditions and restore the traditions to Western Europe um, and restore the traditions to America, the United States. Well, right now, we're being, the, the, the traditions of Western Europe and America have been suppressed by the communists who have got control of it. And that is the that is the reason for the populist insurgency that they complain so heavily about. Oh, but again, they're selling a lie. Yes. Christ, if Judaism's Christianity and, and Islam succeeded, and Islam succeeded the most because it's the full-blown political. Remember, Judaism is a separatist system. 
Um, uh, Christianity is a, a rebellious system and Islam is a conquest system. Separation, yeah. rebellion, conquest. So the, the, the end result of the Abrahamic chain was conquest. Well, we're just seeing the same thing. We're seeing Marxism, neo-Marxism, postmodernism, anti-male feminism, PC woke, anti-Western, anti-science, anti, uh, uh, which is whiteness, and anti-white and anti-male. I mean, what's the difference between the old world and the done? I've made this beautiful graph that shows that there isn't any difference. It's the same false promise of the freedom from the, law, the four sets of laws of nature um, if you believe socially construct the falsehood by which to rebel, uh, to, to separate from, rebel against, or conquer the host polity. So, you know, there's no difference. The problem for, for uh, Christians, Jews, and Muslims is, is that they think they won rather than create a dark age that we're still trying to escape. And so with a problem for today is that these Marxists think they can win and they're creating another dark age. The problem is preventing a dark age, right? Because okay, look that, was a, that was a note to everybody watching that. And I want to encourage them to make small videos to post because it's like the purpose, the problem is to prevent another dark age. Yes. That's the problem of the moment. And, and I want to make this clear. By 800, despite the invention of agrarianism, by 800, every civilization other than Europe had failed. And Europe failed, right? Not because of its institutional basis, but because it couldn't handle that many enemies at once, because it overbit the thing that Europeans can't do. Europeans cannot colonize. <laughs> You cannot make people colonize into the European model. They must come to it of their own choosing. Islam can colonize because it drags people down. China can colonize because it enforces order at the cost of progress. Right? Right? India doesn't have to colonize. It works. Right? The West, the West is still Aryan. We think we need to bring the this to the world right this thing to the world That's we need it. to bring our if we bring anything to the world right it should be the incentive to copy us but this that's idea that we can colonize is yeah, that's goofiness that's goofiness didn't work it, it never worked it did the only time it worked is the two times we used um genocide uh, to replace the men in Europe and to replace the, the men and women in the Americas, right? That's the only time it worked. So we didn't colonize, <laughs> we replaced. And so we don't, we learned, we don't want to do that again. Yeah, that's right? not cool. We decided that's uh, right? uncool. Unfortunately, they keep holding it against us. Like, no, you don't understand. We actually learn from our mistakes. Oh my, right? <laughs> oh my. Oh my. I didn't tell that to Islam or Judaism, right? I appreciate the exceptional rudeness of that statement. I really we actually learn from our mistakes. Damn it, I don't have a hat to tip at you, man. That's me saluting back. That's like, that was a good one, Kurt. We so, oh so it's all good, Kurt. Are you making progress? Yeah. Well, we covered a lot of, you know, it's like, I have to go. This is what I had the problem is. I should, if I had, I don't have the time to go through every one of these. I know. And make and cut and, and do two things. Actually, just say what we're going to talk about for the next X minutes, right? Yes. And then summarize and show how we wove all these concepts together to cross falsify them, right? And then take out the clips that will bait people into watching the longer video that shows how we've woven all these concepts together. That's you know, right. but pe no, people who it's... follow this, you know, as a guy said the other day, says, um, I can hear uh, Dr. Brand and Kurt in my head. And I had a dream <laughs> where I was talking to, right? He's, that's because I'm doing one or two of these videos a day. <laughs> that's awesome, man. It's like that. Well, like, you, wait, you I'm think this would have... There's a there's a there's a, a nutritional supplement you can take, like 24 milligrams of galantamine, and you'll dream more lucidly. <laughs> Guaranteed. 
that was an interesting audience. It is interesting. I have this dent in my head now because of my last lucid dream. <laughs> my, I bled, my remember it bled like crazy. I was complaining about it. No. I uh, I got I get got in a fight. I took a I made a punch. I left out of bed. Oh and my. I wrapped my head on the corner of the end table and bled like crazy. That's a little bit. My mattress crazy. looks like I had a period spill. Oh my! Right. Because there's a big spot. <laughs> It was enough to go through everything, right? Through the, through the uh, blanket, through the, through the sheets, uh, mm. through the mattress cover, and the mattress. oh my! Like, and there's blood all the way to the all the way to oh, the yeah. freaking bathroom. It was like it's like where does this? I mean, it's this little cot, right? <laughs> That's just a, a testimony to the vascular nature of our cranium. God damn. Yes, anyway, sir. so uh, there was I think we covered wait so we're plug we're making a plug to there's one fellow that his name is soft surface he's been making videos i want to encourage people to make these little videos for that very purpose yeah i don't know if i should give away who that is but yeah we know who that is Good. Uh, and he's he's I'm one of our sorry i just want to encourage it yeah they're actually valuable the, the point that other people have tried to do is, yes. is a couple of things a this is way the fuck harder than it looks. <laughs> no, I know. Right. It's, 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 like, it's really hard. For, I really feel bad because I don't science it well enough yet. And I'm still trying to work on that. I, no, I, do, well, no okay. it's, you, you, I, I disagree with that because this is the conversation the guys had. I have about our discourse. It's like, you're perfect because you force me to make a bridge. I'm right? like elf, elf, I Every elf time. Bridges. We make what? bridges, man. Hi, Elf, well, make bridges. It's freaking awesome. I forgot what I was talking about. I already have Kurt. like a cold and whatever. So, sorry, Kurt. You love talking, to do. I go through our, our videos. You're talking and I'm about like, these videos in the, the right, the but I go through our videos and I'm like, that fucking guy. He teased the shit out of me. I lose for, for and then you know, uh, you tease the shit out of me. I didn't, you know. And you were going to say not guilty. Well, and then it's like, then I flou flounder around. Oh, no, you're it's doing like, fine. It's not bad. I'm not bad enough, disorganized <laughs> going down my side track as it is. So, you know, when I give, when I do this in public, right, when I give talks in public, I keep a couple of whiteboards and I use one for questions, right, that they want to ask. And I, and then I just make an outline of my story. So, and I cross things off as, as I go along. So I always have an index so I can go down this, I can go down my you side. You get path, back. Right? Anyway, so to try to do that without having the, the whiteboard, um, uh, what were you just, the argument you were just making? Ugh, I lost I, it. I didn't science it. I'm not good at making it science. Yeah, but that's valuable. I know, I get it. It's like the same thing with, uh, you know, uh, like it's hard to science it. It's also hard. I mean, the hard, hard, hard is operational language. But we've got like a dozen guy, new guys coming up that can do it. That's awesome. And I'm like, how the hell did you get there? And I like just, it's just like you. I, I can't figure this out. I think if I made structured arguments, it would be easier for people to learn, like class material. But I'm watching people do this, and I'm like, they get it from listening to us. Yeah, there's something to it. Um, there's something to, I think, is uh, um, a live, lively conversation that's interactive, utilizing the principles at work here, because yes. it's cross-indexing, it's all over the place, and it, yeah. it creates a, um, a, a more organic- Yeah, a more organic playing. relationship between so many topics. Because you know when I try to teach it linearly, the, the people forget what you know was ten lessons before, right? I mean, because right. we're not always weaving it together. So what happens is like making a dot to dot, and the picture becomes increasingly more clear and yeah, solid in your in your memory and working memory. Yeah, that was a beautiful. Thing. So it's, I think it's just interesting how it works. You know, it's like for me, if you're in a grad school, I like a grad school class. Like I run my companies like a grad school class, right? I mean, I, I basically cheat teaching, I'm teaching people how to run the company, right? Because everything they do, I don't have to, right. is good. <laughs> yeah, right? It's like, works for me. <laughs> 
every decision that doesn't have to get to me is a win, right? right. Uh, and the second thing is that you want more people in the room rather than less, because that when you do that, there's no opportunity to politic, okay. right? You're depriving them of the game. Anyway, I want to get back to the, the, your 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 logo. What do you logos? Uh, ethics here it is. And here ethics. it is. Here we are. But that's really the answer, right? I mean, it's just the old-fashioned version of of uh, it's like ancient. It's fema female years old. Female seduction, male force, and ascendant male or brotherly ethos, right? It's just you know, it's just it's beautiful uh, when you see simple. these things. You know, so you get to say, well, shit, these these old these ancient guys they they came so close on. But because they expressed it that way, it became self-limiting, right? This is one of the problems with with uh, analogies. Yes, is if you don't, if you're not building from first causes, you actually limit your ability to uh, uh, additionally gain a knowledge. So Popper was really good about this. I was really, I'm still moved by the experience of reading uh, sources of knowledge and ignorance. Uh, by Popper's, Popper's essay, Sources of Knowledge and Ignorance. Um, and then Hayek's two, two, speeches, two speeches on uh, economics. Yes. And, and unfortunately, he did make the speech. Uh, in other words, his, he didn't realize how impactful um, the road to serfdom to be. But he needed the act, the version of the road to serfdom in right. economic terms. And he needed to bring that into his law. And he never quite saw that. And, uh, a lot, I was able to do that because of Hop. Right? I was able to see, I see what Hayek couldn't put together there. Um, but, uh, but if you read, I mean, to, for, to me, those are the three. I mean, Popper in general. Well, I mean, I can't really name a specific thing by okay. Hop. It's just his method. You know, Hop is one of those guys where if you read his books, they're good, but he's got a slant and it's really heavy. But underneath that slant is an analytic rigor. You know, in other words, I do an analytic philosophy, which is science and law, right? He does Kantian philosophy. It's rigorous, but it's rationalist, right? And it's a positiva, not a negative. Right, right. So uh, it was understanding what he was doing that said, "I see what Hayek got wrong." He he could he did come up with what we call demonstrated interest, right? And uh, and and I was able to take that right. group of things. What, what it, I mean, really, as a as a, I want to want to um, tip my hat again to you, Kurt, which is this. The premise of demonstrated interest as property uh, in Toto is is far out. That is a yeah. remarkable, and it seems like a nothing. It's like a, it's like it's like a thought bubble, and it's like it's not easy to generate that. That one takes a minute. Well, it's easy for me. <laughs> I don't think it's easy for anyone because you're the first one that I'm aware of that came up with it. Well, I mean, if you look at what what Hayek is saying in the Road to Serfdom. He's covering a lot of things, but the underlying message is, is that uh, normal traditional institutions, value, these are capital. So everybody focuses on human capital yeah. and political systems, right? And, or they pursue so human. So they go from physical capital, like market capital and goods, right? right. To human capital. Um, and then sometimes institutional capital. But Hi what Hayek was saying is, you guys are way discounting informal institutional capital. Like Norwich traditions, values, whatever, yeah. right? uh, or, or what the philosophers would call metaphysics. Okay, right? these are capital because we make you know so many decisions. Metaphysical decisions. capital. It's metaphysical what? capital. I get. I, I like. I have a very strict understanding of metaphysics, right? When you say it to philosophers, they pull all sorts of shit out of their. I know. You know, I listen to them. I make up some words and stop it's it, just, boys. Stop it. <laughs> stop it, it. What they mean is some vague association. I know. But what I mean is first. What I mean is first principles. <laughs> you are very specific. 
But well, you said informal capital is metaphysics. <laughs> metaphysics is an informal capital. In other words, metaphysics is in there with informal capital. In so you may not know what your metaphysics are. Your group evolution, in other words, the first right, principles right. of your so group group evolutionary strategy. Okay. You may know what they are, but yep. they're a capital. They're a capital yep. asset. Because if you oh, get yeah. it wrong, it's really costly. And it's almost impossible to change. Well, I know this is interesting. So we're gonna we get into this. Is we're going back to um, circling way back to um, doubling down, which yes. is we're having a conflict of, of competing group evolutionary strategies inside Western civilization, and we're at the crossroads of we have to pick how we're going to leave this crossroads. And we're well, we're they, kind of coming down to another dark age. It's high noon. It's high noon, and it's like. The, the, the everybody's going to double down because that's what we do. It's behavioral investment, behavioral uh, economics, and it's be, uh, neural parsimony is going to lead us to uh, doubling down. That's what happens. And it's like, and everybody knows it's going to happen. And it's like a passionate mob versus an organized group of Western sovereign individuals is what must occur. It's inevitable. And, and the question is, how do we leave this crossroads without the devol devolution into a chaotic situation? Yeah, I mean, this is, again, we all have this thing about revolution, right? That, right? And of course, the Marxists want to bring about a revolution. That's what they're, they're, they're trying to do. And they're trying to do it incrementally. And their goal is to get to the point where they can apply force to us, which is why they're trying to get rid of the guns. Now, uh, you say that's a conspiracy theory. No, they wrote it fucking down, and and they're, they they wrote down the plan. It's Wait, out there. Only a communist says it's a conspiracy theory. Yeah, you'd have to be. No, no, <laughs> I'd have to be is, deaf to believe the, that. The, the problem is the monkeys in, in their herd. They don't know. They're wait, just wait, no, no. That was bad. That was mixed metaphors. It was not good. There's no right, the wrong the herd, word. man. There's only the cows, the cows in the herd. Okay. The sheep in the herd is the right answer, or the more correct one is the uh, NPCs in the herd. Um, uh, follow this thing, right? Which is evade. Ev wow, well, I want stuff without the responsibility of competing or adapting. Ah, I want to be. Ah. I want to be a child. Um, which is fine if you want to be a child, you just can't have it's any good. political power. What I would like to point out now is this is that um, there's a, there's a, the, the individual has a onus of responsibility to adapt to the environment. That's the reality of the situation. And it is the, the left is attempting to force the environment to adapt to the individual passion. Does that Which make is infantilism. Sense? That's what they're trying right. to do. It's infantilism. And, and, and we're, the problem with the right is we don't we say morality rather than responsibility, right? Right. Um, yes, yeah, so it's the inflationary terminology because it's just not specific at all. Which is, goes back to theology, philosophy, rationalism, uh, law, science, right? So I mean, what we would we would make this argument, which is that you draw the line because it's like. You draw the line to that allows it to scale properly is it ends up being responsibility at the high information high social impact end and it looks like morality at the lower scale it is morality and it can be argued that from that point of view yeah the problem is is do you have a an infant's level of morality selfishness yes a toddler's level um Right. Um, um, mentioned a child's method, a uh, young female's method. That's right. Um, a mature male's method. That's correct. Or, or a mother's, a, a, an adult mother's, or an, a, an, a, an established dominant male's position. Right. I mean, right. You, you, the question is which one of those moralities you have, because you're talking about going from very selfish to very political. So the it is, is, is a scaling issue again. Well, it's always a scaling issue. This is what we call empathizing versus systematizing, right? You have the wow. difference is we're not going, we're, we have to, we start with selfish yeah. <laughs> and we have to move up to empathizing and through to, through to systematizing. The problem is empathizing doesn't scale. 
up and systematizing doesn't scale down. You can't be the dick male in the room who says, well, you know, politically the right answer is whatever. Wait, wait, wait. let the loud child not eat for a week, <laughs> right? <laughs> well, it's like, that doesn't work either, man. And I mean, like what? So in other words, you have to be empathic in the living room. Uh, you have to be social in the pew, right? And you have to be uh, politic, uh, legal in the court, and you have to be uh, political in war, in war, or governments in war, right? So, I mean, you, you know, excuse me, you have to be political in government, and you have to be ruthless in war. There's no, no morality in war. It's just a purely empirical project. And so, you know, just a, a spectrum. And the problem is the female intuition doesn't scale up any more than the male intuition scales down. And so the, the thing is, how do you tell a colorblind person that the difference between red and, you know, red and green? Well, you can't, they can sort of see variations in gray and you can't tell a woman to think about a system systemically or a man to think about empathically. You can find enough women and men in the middle that might be able to explain it to both sides. In That's other it. words, but you you won't. But in, in in simple terms, I mean, <clears throat> I mean, I you you watch young women especially talk to each other, and it's almost like the words are meaningless. <laughs> it's all tone and gesture. I want you to know, I had a I had a very interesting little engagement yesterday with social engagement, and it was like my wife's cousin and his wife came to visit us for the evening, and it's like this, and they all think the same and they are all on the other side of the scale from me and i was just nice that just means they're less developed than you are i was just yeah, well i didn't wouldn't say that i just would no, no, say, true. i would just say <laughs> i'm polite i'm going to be polite and not try to irritate the children by making too many noises that are systematic and and requiring too much information otherwise i will be unpleasant and that I'm already unpleasant enough. Thank you very much. Yeah, the, the reason is, what's the purpose of those people being together? It's not, it's not to, put, to produce theories which are subject to peer review. It's to signal whatever is necessary to create a feeling of, 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 not, of uh, non-threateningness or of support. I was very non-threatening. That was nice. It's, you notice, you know, you see what I'm saying? It's like that. It's like I just scaled back my expectations to the, the right level of information saturation of the environment that I was in. Let's take it down further. Oh, I like what that. is what is really going on in that room is a bunch of dogs butt sniffing. Oh, my. That's all that's oh going my. on. <laughs> what do you have for dinner? <laughs> That's, well, it's what, that's, that's what butt, dog butt sniffing is about. What did you eat yesterday? <laughs> but I mean, it's just how they sort of get to know each other. I just try to be nice. Right? You know, that's all that's like, going on. There you have it. A little play, a little butt sniffing, a <laughs> little grooming. That, the, the, the conversation is meaningless. Right. It's just <laughs> it's tones and gestures. It and doesn't mean anything. Pressure. That's what's going on in the left. But that's what they want. They want to feel. That's nice. And we want to act. That's right. And it's like, what we want to bring about So, so that's change. interesting because it's like, the, so we go back to the prime, the primary cause of it, the, the first principle of it, which is what are you gaining? Right. Yeah. And so they're gaining feelings. That's and good. that's a real thing. It has so limited the reduction value. of stress is a thing. By the con by the ad, I mean, and That's to be right. leftist, it's more you're going to likely be uh, more neurotic, which is when you have more worries, and you're going to be uh, more empathic, right? And um, you're going to be less competitive. I mean, these are just what's going to happen. I lost you somehow. Where you're good. You? No, I'm just making notes. I'm trying to. I just. Oh, no, I mean, I lost you on my screen. I accidentally. Oh, I saw I tried you looking for me. But I, I tried to get rid of a notification and you went away. <laughs> I disappeared. Sorry, Kurt. <laughs> I, I, take, I take responsibility for that somehow. I don't know how. Okay, I still have coffee. I'm going good. All it's right. Very good. It was a very... That, no, now let's, take, now let's take it back to your triangle. Yes, yes. Okay, I'll show it again for the audience. There it is. Take a screenshot, kids.
That's a good one. Okay. <laughs> I'm, trying wait, to drag, wait. I'm trying to drag everybody out of philosophy. And... Hit like, subscribe, and notifications, <laughs> and leave some messages so Kurt has something to talk about because it's always amusing to everybody. Thank you. I'm trying to compete with Russell Brandy as Bob. No, Russell Brand. He has five million and a half subscribers. I'm like, he's. Have you been watching him? I watch him pretty often. He's pretty time. good, man. He's getting right on the money. He's over the target, and he's well, gone. He's a comedian. What's, What's a comedian's job? I, I, I know there. You don't mess with these people. Yeah. They're 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 like a comedian's their, job is to tell the tr tell a pain is to tell a painful truth and a social circumstance so that we can be deprived of the stress. In other words. Uh, uh, re relieved of the stress of living with the painful truth. Oh, oh it's, a, it's like that. that it, it's a it's a relief of cognitive dissonance. But he said okay, the thing good, that, that cannot be said. Word. Right? It's emo emotional too. But yeah, oh, the emotional yeah, absolutely. burden of cognitive dissonance. Well, because I mean that's what a comedian does. They get up online and they talk about the truth in a place where it's safe, right? And they do right. it because we all know we commit these sins of deceit and fraud and whatever, and self, yeah. you know, yeah. we all know we do this stuff, right? But it's manner, it, but manners prevent us from doing it. And we're not allowed to talk about it because it's so rude. And but I want to point out that it's an aspect of a high trust society. Ah, ah. Uh, we allow ourselves it, to engage in this right. comedic behavior. So we, again, we have, let's take i'll add comedy last right yes. right so we have uh reporting in the military uh we have mm. Uh, mm. uh testimony in court mm. we have truth before face in public we have confession in church and we have comedy and the play for release so we have all these ways of of getting mindfulness right we notice we have to pay all these costs of truth before face. Yeah. All yeah. of them. It's burdensome as hell. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right. Because we're always trying to protect face, which is our status. Okay, that's a human nature. Right. The most and important so, thing we have. Right. Right. So European civilization has all these institutions. Military reporting. Uh, co court testimony. Uh, truth before face in public. Now, the warranty ability of your words, right? Um, uh, uh, promise and contract, um, uh, confession in court, and comedy, comedy in the play for relief. You know, what's the tragedy? What's the reason for the Greek tragedy? To celebrate our mutual suffering, right? To right. in a social group. So we have all these ways of producing mindfulness. Right, which is we do a very counterintuitive thing, which we have all these institutions that teach us to put truth before face. But what is the purpose of Marxism, neo Marxism, postmodernism, uh, anti male feminism, PC woke, uh, anti West? It's to stop us from telling truth before face. It's, just it's to stop us from talking about the truth, right? So that they can lie, they can socially construct uh, lies. Uh, so they, they're, they're, that allows a freedom of action because they're not being impaired by people that disagree. <laughs> they want to lie. They want to no. socially construct a lie. The problem is, what is the benefit? What is the primary competitive advantage of Western civilization? Truth, trust, which enables rule of law. If you can't have rule of law, if you can't have testimony. Yeah. So what are we doing with all these people? We're trying to put, you know, George Washington trapped on the cherry tree. It doesn't mean that the George Washington thing has to be true, right? And if you knew anything about George Washington, you know he's a he was a dick when he was young, a ruthless aristocratic dick when he was young, right? You know, they didn't get that land for being nice. He he, he was he was you know he murdered a bunch of French soldiers quite intentionally. And he didn't have to. I didn't, I was not aware of this. Uh, so he knew exactly what he was doing. He was an old world aristocrat yes. who, who wisened with experience. Right. And his whole thing was, don't open your mouth 
Well, of course, if you look at his discipline, his whole thing was discipline, German. I mean, he was German. I mean, fundamentally, he's a, he's a great example of the fact that European, uh, that American uh, a- Anglosphere was German until 1830. Right? When that's, we sort of switched over. But we're just West Germanics, North Germanics, you know, and then the three layers, we're just Germanics. Right? Okay. West, West Germanics. So he's a great example of German discipline in the. So you're saying there's a Germanic failure in 1830? Well, I mean, it's just when you realize you're an island people. Oh, that's and the English that, empire. And you, right, and you've got the empire. And so what you do is you start developing commercial, commercial ethics above uh, uh, aristocratic ethics. So, you know, that becomes so more pragmatic. It's, it's commerce, it's commerce. Right. So, I mean, the, the British aristocracy, unfortunately, people will disagree with me, rightly believed they were the most moral people on earth. And that's why they had the right to rule, is because the they were the most moral people on moral earth. Moral people, okay. And the truth is, they were. Um, now, it, you know, that's like saying, this, so he says, well, there's this, 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 this. And I'm like, well, you have to look at it in the context of the time, right? You can't take present technology and move it to the past. You can't take present present ethics move in the past but if you look at them at the time they invented the modern state they did so by understanding that 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 uh, what morality was originated in which is cooperation and that they had discovered the modern state by figuring out how to scale it through rule of law so i mean it's not complicated the problem was that they got too full of themselves like americans got too full of themselves in the post-war period right so we always get too full of ourselves and everybody tries to reach too far. Oh, well, no, it's I think, I, I, yeah, no, I, I, I'm going to, I'm going to clarify that a little bit. Post-war period being after the second world war, I presume. There's the, the, the Anglo, the, the Anglo-American establishment moved the empire from Britain to the United States. Well, that's what happened, and they they just they just it, changed. They it. moved it. Yeah. Okay. Well. They, well, because the, the English was not able to, uh, it was bankrupt. Couldn't do it. Okay. So, so like, but you, well, we again, you know, we we without the contact, it's always like without contact. The what was the reason? Because mm-hmm. our view of Europeans is the Muslim view of current Muslim view of Americans. Right. They were they always. Not, that's interesting. All right. So uh, we had it in our head that we could make a more peaceful world if we could get these Europeans under control. But just like Germany thought uh, is that you you needed the the Germans knew they needed the British Empire because the British Empire was creating the world trade and Germany couldn't do that. And so they knew it. They just blew it. I mean, they, they who blew it? Everybody blew it. They thought, like, I think and, the, Amer- I, and the Americans and, and Angles are worse. They should just, the British should have stayed out of the First World War. Let it fucking happen. Right? The Americans? The British should have, and the Americans. Right? And I, then the. I, 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 it's, it's, it should not have come to pass. Okay. Well, First I mean, World even War. if you, that's great, it shouldn't have come to pass. Uh, the problem was that, that, uh, that anyway. We're not in our. We need the British Empire, and when you so when you say we took it over, yeah, we intentionally took over Britain by letting them go into debt to us, right? And then taking the well, replacing there was, there was the exchange. pound with the dollar. It was a trade. It was it was a trade, but we lost the monarchy, and we lost the. <sighs> if you even if you look at today, the British are better international politicians than we are because they're still more moral than we are. I got nothing to say. The whole place is run over by socialists. Well, you know, uh, you, socialism is just another label, right? So the, the answer is it's the female strategy. We have let the, we have let the lie get out of control. Uh, we, we allowed the industrialization of lying under the pretense of the freedom of speech. Yeah. And the freedom of speech is lim- under, the reason we need that under, Trifunctionalism is to preserve preserve trifunctionalism. 
but freedom of speech needs to be true to freedom of truthful reciprocal speech, not freedom to fraud, defraud the public of false promise. Well, socialism, all the Marxism, socialism, these are all false promises of freedom from the necessity of, of, of a mindfulness, responsibility, and hierarchy that are the result of the markets that bring about prosperity. So there's no, it's just a lie. They're just a fraud. I know. Thank you for saying it though, Kurt. And I want someone to cut that out because that was an excellent quote. I marked it at 142, just saying. Just saying. You're doing good so, work. And it, it is, it's an excellent thing. And it's like, what, what does it mean? It's like, well, that, that's the, the ultimate nature of the problem. I want to teach you some Hebrew now because you'll like it. I won't like this it. Is but the I'll, the but, you but will I'll, like I'll, it. You I will, will like it. You I will, will like it. I appreciate that you like it. There you go. That's nice too. Okay. <laughs> this is the, the um, verbalization. It sounds like English. Shut up. And it means partner. <laughs> See, you appreciate it. And it's like this. I want people to know this. I do not make this up because I certainly am not that good. <laughs> Says everything you need to know. I'm going to need have. therapy after this conversation. Good. <laughs> Okay, the high elves are happy to, to fund that if that's necessary. All right, so uh, I said back we here. an incidental expense. <laughs> Go ahead. Back to your triangle. Well, it's changed a little bit since, since I wrote some more things on there. Well, what we need to do really is take this and start with male female, whatever. There you go. Force, force. And then we need to write down the whole spectrum. Yes. Of yes. underneath each one, how it manifests in each. Yes. So there's like, as many what, dimensions. What goes I, I, that triangle. That's perfect. I'm pretty sure I did that somewhere. I'm, I, I don't doubt it. <laughs> so, a lot of things. A lot, <laughs> lots of things. Okay. I will, I will look at that. That's you great. know, one of the reasons I kept this blog as an archive is so I could, you know, I could and then other people in the future could go through all the stupid thought stuff I thought of while I was getting there. Right. And it's so funny just to go back to 15, 14, 12. Right. And, not, not, and go back in order, even back to 2007 and see me struggling, uh, see myself struggling. Oh, yeah. To try, this doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just I know. It, what, what, what's amazing is art. It's art, and it's a, a scientific art. And I, I want to now. I discovered today the discovery of phosphorus, which occurred about 1660, by a German fellow. Now I'll give you his name just because I, I appreciate his work that much. Um, his name was um, um, Henrik Brandt, and he lived in Hamburg, and okay. he just built some. 1200 liters of urine to find it right that's gross <laughs> i'm just telling you that's those that's alchemy that's science at its work right he's figuring out where phosphorus came from but it's like phosphorus is where it's at which is anyway that it goes to anyway i'm gonna we'll leave it at that that's enough gross gross was good enough it's good kurt You're, so, right, but so it's, a, it's, a, it's dedication to purpose and discipline at the purpose that makes the beautiful thing happen. And the, watching the sausage being made is a, a wholly not necessary, right? Sure. <laughs> I just say, and it's okay. So you did good work, man. And what I wanna do, I wanna wrap this one up and then um, reconvene and we can go on the law. Yeah, there's two directions to go. Okay. Um, and I and originally, because you started out with the triangle, I'm like, well, maybe we'll go that direction. But I think we ought to just, if I can get my head in the right space, can you do we it? Can finish, we can finish up the choice of how to organize the government. Okay. And at that point, we've sort of gone back to now we can cover first principles. Okay. Because you have to do the first principles for you to do policies. That's right. So is that okay with you? That's perfect. All right. All Thank right. you, everyone. You know, appreciate it. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and leave lots of comments. I'll see you later, Kurt. Hey, by the way, ping me. Yes, sir. Uh, call me on signal. Yes, sir.